Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and this is my $3,000 ultra high end gaming PC buyer's guide for summer 2020. Now, if you do have a $3,000 budget, you have a lot of options in front of you, and I have optimized this system to give me a great blend of gaming and content creation performance. Now, if all you care about is gaming, then you're going to want to go with Intel, specifically the Core i7 10,700K, which comes in around the same price point as the 3900X processor from AMD, but is better for gaming and, frankly, worse for everything else. But again, if all you care about is gaming, you do want to go with Intel. I'm going to have some benchmarks a little bit later on in this video to show you the difference when you look at both content creation and gaming performance of those two processors. Now, in terms of the other components, if you go with AMD, as I suggest here, you're going to want an X570 chipset. I'm using the X570 e Gaming from Asus. I really like Asus for a lot of reasons. And one of those is that it integrates really well with the Corsair IQ system, which is the lighting control system that this build uses. Now, that is built into this chassis, the Crystal 680X chassis from Corsair. It's also incorporated into nearly all the other components in this system, and I'm going to go through them one by one. But Corsair and Asus have this great partnership where the Asus motherboard can now be controlled by the Corsair IQ software in Windows, and you can also now control Asus graphics cards. That's just been announced, that additional partnership between the two companies. Now, apart from that, I really love Asus motherboards. I think their own software is excellent, very high quality, and I also like the price and performance you get from Asus. Great blend of quality, of features, and of course, longevity. You know, that's pretty important. I've had a number of motherboards fail over the years, but Asus has been very reliable for me. So I really do always look to Asus first and then see if anyone else can compete. But right now I like their X570 e Gaming a lot. And they have a similar Z490 board that I will list down below if you're going with the Intel spec system. Now in terms of the solid state drive, because I have an X570 chipset, I can take advantage of a Gen 4 drive. And that's what I'm doing here with the MP600. From Corsair, that's around $200. That is a Gen 4 drive, able to hit almost 5,000 megabytes per second sequential read-write. If you're going with Intel, you, you can't take advantage of Gen 4 yet. You're limited to Gen 3. That's just a platform limitation. And so I'm going to suggest a less expensive solid-state drive to you. That's going to be the SX8200 Pro from XPG. It's about $130. And frankly, since you're going to be building that system for gaming anyway, the 5,000 megabyte per second sequential read-write is irrelevant. You don't need that. It doesn't do you any good in gaming. A PCIe Gen 3 drive is fine for gaming. So again, two different specs for two different users. But what I have built up here is really the blended system for an all-around user. Now, other components. I do have Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro RAM in here. I really like the looks of it. My system has... 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM. I think that comes in at a really great price for that capacity. And I do like having 32 gigabytes for my content creation needs. Now, if you're a gamer or you just want to run some benchmarks, you probably want to run DDR4 3600. I've published a few other videos on this topic. DDR4 3600 is really a sweet spot for performance, particularly on Ryzen systems, but it will cost you more if you want 32 gigabytes of it. And so I will list an alternative in the video description below. It's about $100 more. It's a, it's a kit from G-Skill, and it offers 3,600 megahertz operation plus really tight timing. So don't get fooled. You can't just go by the frequency. The timings matter a lot. And there are actually quite a bit of 3,600 kits out there that are actually slower than 3,200 kits. So you actually really do have to pay attention to the specs, as I've shown in my previous videos. But I like the DDR4 3200 kit because, frankly, it's a good price for 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is what I want in my system. Now, moving on, I do have a Corsair cooler and power supply. Both of these special edition white models are unfortunately out of stock right now. H100i RGB Platinum SE and then the RM850X PSU. They're both awesome looking. You'll be able to see them in this video, but you won't be able to buy them. So I will list alternatives down below. The black version of this cooler, I believe, is still in stock. 
As for power supplies, basically every Corsair power supply has been sold out since March. So I'm going to offer a different brand that comes in at the same 850 watts and comes in around the same price that this power supply used to sell for, which was around 140 to 150 dollars. So we'll stick to that budget, but we'll have to go with a different brand. Now, in terms of the other components, the most important is going to be the video card. And it gets a little complicated right now because we are at a transition point. I'm running the RTX 2080 Ti from EVGA. I love it and I would recommend it at $1,200, except for the fact that it has been discontinued. If you find RTX 2080 Ti cards out on the market today, as of late July when I'm videoing this, frankly, you're gonna probably pay too much. So what I suggest you do instead is bide your time by picking up an EVGA RTX 2080 Super for $700. So no, it's not as fast as the 2080 Ti, but what you can do is use EVGA's 90-day step-up program to upgrade your video card when the new NVIDIA Ampere GPUs hit the market likely in late September or early October. Now, this is only open to certain regions, I believe North America and Europe. I'll post a link down below to the FAQ so you can find out if you can take advantage of EVGA Step Up Program. I've done it many times personally. It is the real deal. They send you a brand new card and give you full retail value for your trading. It's a great Step Up Program and it's the only one out there. So again, I, I say you bide your time, go with the RTX 2080 Super, which is still a fine card, but save up some of your money because I do think you want to then upgrade to something like a $1,200 card when they become available. I do anticipate the 3080 Ti or whatever it's going to be called will be around $1,200 and will probably be about 25% faster than the card I have in the system, the RTX 2080 Ti. So it's a little bit of a complicated recommendation, but it's the best I can do right now in the summer of 2020 when essentially the current cards are being EOL'd and we have no new cards to buy yet but luckily EVJ is there to help with their step up program. Now, once you add in the cost of Windows 10, which is around $140, we hit our $3,000 budget. I do want to mention that includes one additional fan. This case includes three LL120s in the front, which are great looking and, and a rather drab looking non-RGB fan in the rear. So I have upgraded that here with a $40 LL120. I also have for illustration purposes, two LL120s at the bottom of this case. I'm going to be showcasing the bottom to top airflow advantage they provide in a later video coming up on this channel where I do take a look at what you can do when you have airflow available from all four sides of the system. So that will be pretty interesting again coming up on the channel soon. One last plug I want to give before I dive inside the system and give you a closer look is the IQ Nexus from Corsair. This is something I reviewed recently and it just goes to show how far Corsair has come in terms of integrating lighting control into the IQ software suite. So not only can you control all the components inside here using the software, as well as peripherals like this dark core mouse or my favorite headset, the Virtuoso SE, you can actually use the Nexus to control them via a simple touch. So I can actually change the full lighting scheme of my entire system plus my hardware using just a touch of on this touch screen. It's a $100 uh, accessory. Of course, it's optional, but it's really cool if you do go with a Corsair IQ build. You can then take advantage of that touch screen control for your lighting and other functions of the system. And here's one last look at all the hardware in this system, including my EVGA RTX 2080 Ti, my Asus motherboard, the Corsair cooler, and of course, hidden behind that is the Ryzen 9 3900X. Let's get into some benchmarks. So first, I'll give you the content creation and synthetic system benchmarks using the RTX 2080 Ti and DDR4 3600CL18 RAM, which is really similar to the 3200CL16 RAM I'm recommending for the base build. You see that in these benchmarks, the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X is ahead of the Core i9 9900K and everything but the Geekbench 5 single core bench. And that is because of course, you have 12 cores versus 8, but the Intel system does have higher clock speed. This 9900K with MCE enabled, that's multi-core enhancement, runs at up to 5 gigahertz. So it's very similar to the Core i7-10700K that I would recommend to gamers today. Note that the Ryzen system does have Precision Boost Overdrive enabled, which added about 100 megahertz to the speed. I found that it ran about 4.1 gigahertz 
in Cinebench R20 versus 4 gigahertz, and that added about 1.5% to the overall score. So while the Ryzen 9 12 core was well ahead in some of those content creation benchmarks, here you see the Intel 8 core CPU is ahead in most of the game benchmarks, up to 10% with Battlefield 5. And now that Intel has rebranded the 9900K as the new 10700K and dropped the price to match the 3900X, it's the obvious choice for hardcore gamers. And that wraps up the $3,000 ultra high-end PC buyer's guide. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.